The Alacnac 2 tent is a Cabela's exclusive Outfitter Series tent. There's the tent itself, which comes in its own custom duffel bag, weight with poles and spikes, probably about 70 pounds. So not exactly a backpacking style tent. Once taken out of its duffel bag, you have the main tent fabric itself, and separate bags for the pole, as well as for the ropes and the pegs, or the ropes and the pegs. So you have standard draw cords on the bags for accessories, and the bags themselves are made of very thick, rugged material. Anyways, so this is the tent once it's on the ground, all spread out. This particular size is a 12 by 12 uh, tent. It's also available in 10 by 10 and 12 by 20. I believe those are the other two sizes. The other thing of interest on this right now is the way that these hooks work. So these are fairly well constructed, heavy metal, and uh, heavy duty canvas and it's double sewn into the seams. The stock stakes that come with the tent are 12 inch um, angled iron steel with uh, hooks built into them. Fairly sturdy, however, an alternative to consider that I've seen used on commercial tents is uh, rebar um, um, pegs with something welded onto them in order to provide the hooks. The main pole is made up of three sections. This is going to be a center pole that goes up into the center of the tent, as you'll see shortly. The interesting thing here that I want to show you is the shock cording. It's all held together with shock cording, where the ends that actually go out across the edges of the metal um, are indeed themselves a metal cable. The center pole is fairly tall. It's just over nine feet tall. As you can see, Thank you. it's very high up. You go into the front door, and there's a pocket that it's going to, the center pole is going to go into and then there's a pocket on the bottom as well. And you end up with something that looks like this. This is the center pole, looking at it from the inside. There's the pocket it goes into at the top. And here's the pocket that it goes into on the bottom. With the center pole in, the next thing we do is put in the corner posts. And the corner poles are in place. It's a single post that attaches the bottom and at the top. And then comes out at a 45 degree angle to a peg. What we have on ours, left over from the last time we used it, is orange tape to help avoid tripping on these wires, which are black and very difficult to see at night. The corners that the pegs go into are heavy-duty steel grommet with reinforced heavy-duty canvas double sewn into the corner of the Cabela's tent. The guy rope is attached to the uh, top side of the grommet in order that as it's going down to the ground, um, it will put pressure on the, uh, on the top of the grommet and hold it on the pole. The steel pins on the rings insert into the bottom of the pole. These steel pins, combined with the grommet up at the top of the pole, ensure that the pole travels the whole length and holds the edge or corner of the tent taut. So in each center of each pole, there's also Velcro that attaches it to the tent to ensure that the tent remains in a straight line as well as taut. In addition to the corner poles, there's also two center poles on each side, the two sides in the back. The guy ropes have a handy little triangular tight their tightening mechanism is triangular based two holes and based simply on friction any reasonable style of knot can be used in order to attach the uh, guy ropes to the top of the poles and remember of course that the guy rope needs to go on the top of the material section of the pole if you put it underneath and wind comes along it could easily lift the lift the material up and off the pole we don't want that so of course the guy rope goes over top this one here we see we have a figure eight on a bite that holds the uh, guy rope here. On a different post, the one next to it, we've used a different style of knot. It's just a hitch. A triple hitch in this case. Double hitch would be more than sufficient as well. If you're not using the vestibule, this is what the front of the tent will look like where the door is. I'll have a shock corded pull that acts as the frame for the front entrance. A guy rope, single guy rope to hold it down to the center. And then that provides uh, shelter to the door from the elements. This is a single wall tent not a double wall tent uh, and it's quite waterproof. From the inside uh, the windows on the two sides and the back look like this piece of material that can simply be unzipped to expose, uh, get some ventilation and bring in some fresh air and then rolled up and tucked into itself. In addition to these windows for additional ventilation even in bad weather are these ones here which are simply valcoed into place 
and can then hang down. And remember that at the outside, as you can see through the screening there, is the angled uh, cover that prevents any sort of rain from coming in. Each corner, there's these fold down cup holders and little platforms, and these pockets for putting in gear, keys, change, make flashlights, what have you. The top has these always open vents which allows any air circulation that's occurring to uh, the hot air to go up and vent out at the very top of the tent. Very important to keep condensation down inside your tent. Ports a wood stove and this is the opening for the chimney. Peter if you want to go ahead and open that. Highly fire returned uh, material that, uh, applies the, that protects the tent wall from the heat of the chimney. Just below the chimney opening, of course, is the opening in the tent floor. It's zippered with a number 10 YGK zipper, I believe. And this is the spot in the floor that opens up to put your wood stove. These are little ties where one would clip in the uh, optional floor if one should have it. We don't use the optional floor. Instead, we have a piece of 12 by 12 indoor-outdoor carpeting that we use on it. On the outside of the tent, there's a number of little spots that have clips on them. And down the side, is these various little spots for clipping. This is all on the same side as where the stovepipe would come out. The reason for that is that there's also an optional cover that you can get to help avoid any embers that should come out of your stovepipe from landing back down and going through the roof of your tent. And so there's the tent set up. Remember it was without the vestibule. Now it's got the vestibule on it. Great big front porch. It attaches to the pole that held up the uh, arch for the normal tent door. And then it has its own shock corded pole that goes up through the center to support it there with guide wires coming out to the front. We haven't bothered hooking up the side guide wires, but as you can see there's a rope hanging there which would be for the side guide wires as well. A large screen window on either side of it. Okay, so here's how the clips on the post work. Where we do have these clips on the posts, they just snap on and off very easily. Fairly large, heavy duty, strong canvas connectors with double sewing. Um, to hold it onto the uh, seam, and they just snap easily into place. View from the front, and this section on the front here has a zipper on either side that will allow it to zip up the side, as Peter's doing right now. To open that up, you can either do one side for easy access with maximum shelter, or you can do up both sides and then actually fold or roll up the vestibule to give you a nice entrance right into the open area. It's floorless until you get to the tent. It's a simple uh, toggle and hook mechanism to hold it in place. Well simple for most of us anyway. <laughs> you can have the front door down the last little clip it was open, but you can just have one of the sort of the triangular corners open in the vestibule looking into the tent, sitting in one of the corners of the tent, looking around. It is over nine feet tall in the center here. The walls are four feet high. So what we do is we have our wood stove in here and we have cots um, that run along the uh, corners and the edges. Um, we've had three people in the tent sleeping comfortably, but uh, it's even more comfortable with just two. Looking out to the vestibule. It's uh, got a uh, rainproof uh, door as well as mesh screening with uh, YGK number 10 zippers. And inside the tent looking at the vestibule through the small triangular opening. Hey Pete, yeah. want to come through that opening? So they get an idea of uh, scale and dimension? Yeah, the six foot four bodies walking through the room. <laughs> Excellent. And that there is our home away from home during our fall moose hunting trips in northern Ontario. Never know what type of weather you can get. It could be hot t-shirt weather or you can have four inches of wet cold snow. It's 12 by 12 on the base tent part itself. The vestibule adds another 10 feet in length. It's a well-made tent. Um, and uh, it's one I would recommend to anybody looking for a good, inexpensive uh, 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 outfitter or base camp tent.